Let us pray. Loving God, help us to hear your call and to follow. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe I mentioned last week that our Wednesday noon hour class, we're looking at the book of Isaiah. And this coming Wednesday, the assignment is to read chapters 6 through 10. So we have our uh, first uh, reading this coming week. You're welcome to come. Even if you have not read that, at least you'll have read the first part of chapter 6, right? So you're ready for class. What a amazing line. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty. Do you know the translation high and lifted up? That's what's in my head. That must be the RSV. Um, doesn't that sound grand and regal and just really biblical? I mean, there's just something about that that uh, is so wonderful. How often in these scriptural texts, uh, the, the writer posits it into a historical time. In the year that King Uzziah died, that God steps into this world with its rulers, with all that's going on. God steps in uh, to our everyday lives. Isaiah, moved beyond measure by the encounter with God, cries out, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. When faced with the creator of all things, Isaiah is moved to see that he is not worthy. And yet, God has stepped into human history and called this uh, single man to uh, speak God's word of judgment and love into the world. Well, there's so many great stories in the Bible. I've, I've often talked with Pastor Doug Goodwin. He's pastor at First uh, Christian Church. And together with a few other congregations, we do vacation Bible school each summer, right? And, and each year, the, we get the curriculum and you get five stories for the week of vacation Bible school, five Bible stories. And often, we'll kind of lament the stories they choose. Like three of them will be great. One will be kind of, uh, and the other one is like, why on earth are we making these children or me deal with this story this week? And uh, Doug and I have often talked about, we'd like to just pick, I don't know, 15 or 20 stories and have a three or four year rotation because there's some key stories that we've got to all know well. And, and I would say that for sure this this uh, story from, uh, from Luke 5 would be one of them. But maybe the Isaiah call story too would be pretty good. But, but then, there, well, there's so many others, right? So then how can you narrow it down to 15 or 20? Well, let's talk about this one, huh? Um, uh, this uh, story we get from Luke is filled with all sorts of meaning and, and sort of uh, movement in it. Uh, we have Jesus and the great crowd. We have uh, Jesus stepping into the boat so he can, so he can be uh, safe. And so I have to say the word boat in front of you. And I don't know how to say the word boat other than the Minnesotan way. And so if that annoys you, I apologize for the long O's. Um, you have Peter and his companions working uh, their everyday job, literally minding their own business as Jesus interrupts Peter uh, to, to use his boat. And Jesus teaches the crowd. And, and I think this is so interesting. So often it'll have, you know, Jesus teaching, Jesus is doing this, and it doesn't tell us what Jesus says. It's that Jesus, I mean, it's... Th over and over and over, the thing about Jesus is Jesus. That's not in my sermon. I'm just mentioning that. So now the sermon's getting longer and longer. When he had finished speaking, Luke tells us, Jesus invites Peter to let down the nets again. And if you think about it, this is a pretty odd request. Uh, what does Jesus know about fishing? Nothing, right? He's a carpenter. Peter knows. He knows that you fish at night and you clean the nets in the morning. 
Why should Peter listen to this carpenter? If Jesus had suggested some woodworking things to do to repair the boat, Peter would have probably assumed he knew more about boats than Jesus as well. Master, Peter says, we've worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. Kind of curious, really, isn't it? Why did Peter listen to him? Peter knew infinitely more about fishing than Jesus. If the fish weren't there this past evening, they're probably not going to be there now either, right? Peter's pretty sure that whatever he throws, uh, wherever he throws the nets in the water, uh, all that will come of it is he'll have to clean the nets again. And so I think one of the interesting questions is, why does Peter give in? Is he just tired? Children sometimes will wear their parents out, right? To get them to say yes. But it must be something else here, huh? Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. There's something about this man, Jesus, that causes Peter to listen to him, huh? Was it simply the invitation to the deep Did something in that call to the deep resonate for Peter? Was life too shallow for him? Did Jesus offer some depths that spoke to Peter's greatest needs and his most heartfelt dreams? I like to think that it was something Peter overheard while he was working on the boat and Jesus was teaching the crowd. Whatever it is, Peter replies, Master, if you say so, I will let down the nets. If you say so. Peter rows out to the deep water, gathers the nets together and tosses them into the water, probably counting the hours it's going to cost him, figuring he won't go to bed all that much later if he had caught a bunch of fish and had to take them to the market. Let's the Nets down, wondering to himself why on earth he's listening to this guy. Wondering, too, what he will do if he has many more days of no catch and no fish. It can become pretty hard for a fisherman to put food on the table, huh? And then, then Peter is totally surprised. And for quite a while, he has no time to think, does he? No time to consider anything as he and his partners work to take in the nets that are beginning to break. Call over the other boat, gather the fish first into one boat and fill that one, then fill the other and somehow get back from the deep. For now, Luke tells us the boats are beginning to sink. What a great story for vacation Bible school, huh? or for you and me as well, this tale of the amazing catch. What great drama as the scene moves from almost sleepy, sunny day with a teacher teaching by the lake to suddenly being a day of these fishermen's greatest ever catch of fish. And in response to this, we hear echoes of Isaiah's words in the face of, of the wonder and majesty of God. Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. In response, Jesus announces to Peter and uh, to James and John as well, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. Now in this story of wonders, one might suggest that the most amazing part of it all is the conclusion. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. Here's the one thing Peter and all of them had dreamed of, the the thing they must have felt they needed more than anything else, a catch to rival all others. Two boats overloaded with fish. They've struck the mother load and they're the envy of every other fisherman on the lake. 
they left everything and followed him. What an amazing story, this story of the great catch. But as I've thought about it, I think the great catch isn't two boatloads of fish. The great catch is Peter. The great catch is Jesus catching Peter and James and John. The great catch is Jesus catching you and our Vacation Bible School children and each and every one here. There's so much to this story. It calls out to little children and it calls out to you and to me. Jesus invites you to the deep. Jesus invites you into the waters of God's grace, which will watch over, wash over you and make you worthy to stand in God's presence. With Paul, you can truly say, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And God's grace toward me has not been in vain. Like Peter, you have been caught by Jesus. Like Peter, you have been caught and called and sent. In the beginning of the third year of the global COVID pandemic, when the Winter Olympics were in China and Mark Gordon was governor of Wyoming, the Lord called out to you and said, you are mine. Thanks be to God. Amen. 